This towering dessert almost resembles a children's stacking toy, and sometimes there's a prize hidden inside. Made with just a few ingredients, it can be a bit tricky to make and can sometimes take generations to perfect. And while its origins may have started in Greece, it has now become a Scandinavian tradition for many families over the holidays. We're exploring the history and origins of Kronzakaka. I'm your host, Glenn Warren, and welcome to another serving of Seasons Eatings, the podcast which explores the history and origins of your favorite Christmas foods. Seasons Eatings can be found wherever you download your favorite podcasts. Seasons Eatings is also found on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you love the show, then I humbly ask you to share this podcast with someone you think would love to hear more about the history of Christmas and the foods which shape the holidays we love so much. If you want to give me suggestions for future episodes, just email me at seasonseatingspodcast at gmail.com. All the links can be found in the show notes at seasonseatingspodcast.com. The holiday season in Scandinavia is filled with all sorts of delicious treats. I've already talked about the rice pudding left out for the Nisa, or the house elves, on Christmas Eve in a previous episode. We've all seen the towering pile of star cookies in increasing sizes adorning the pages of your favorite Christmas magazine. This decoration has its possible origins from Scandinavia. Kronzakaka is a traditional Danish or Norwegian confection often eaten on special occasions in Scandinavia. In English, the name means wreath cake. In Norway, it's alternatively referred to as tarnkaka, or English tower cake, and often prepared for Constitution Day celebrations, Christmas, weddings, and baptisms. And in Denmark, it's typically eaten as a part of a New Year celebration, while a variation of the cake is traditionally served at weddings and baptisms. The history of this cake is a bit unclear. Eclectic Home and Life identifies one origin tale from Greece. Well, Crete, actually. The myth has it that the nymph Amthea raised Zeus in a cave and fed him goat milk. As thanks, she received the horn of abundance from Zeus, where all her wishes came true. A horn was chosen as the symbol from the goat horn from the animal that had given Zeus his milk. From this time, the horn of plenty was born and became a symbol of abundance, fruitfulness, and fertility around the world. From historical references and paintings, it would appear that the horn of plenty, otherwise known as a cornucopia, first started to make its appearance as food around the mid-1700s, and it was here that the Kronzakaka has its origins. Kronzakaka is rumored to derive from one ringed cake called the Overflutigetskorn, which is also made of dough rings but set on its side like a cornucopia. Since the cornucopia is a symbol of abundance, the dessert is filled with candy and treats which may be where the tradition of filling the inside of a kronzakaka with champagne or candy and more came from. Regardless of who made the first vertical tower of rings, these cakes have been found on Scandinavian tables during festival occasions for over two centuries. Kronzakaka can be traced back to the tradition of having a showbread or a traditional decorative bread on the table. The name suggests that the pastries, or rather the constructions, were supposed to be a sight to behold. From the 17th century, pyramid-shaped arrangements of cake and fruit on French dessert tables have been described, a recipe that's been found to show 
that a cake has been baked in marzipan and built up using rings. The history of Kranzakaka begins in 1806 in Copenhagen, Denmark, when it was published in a cookbook by chef Hans Heinrich Petersen. Marzipan, what, which is one of the critical comp components of this cake, was very expensive since almonds were grown in Spain and Italy, and sugar came from sugarcane, which had to be imported. Both ingredients were considered the provenance of the rich and elite. In 1872, a sugar factory using sugar beets, which grew in the frozen north, was established in Denmark. Then almonds were imported from Germany, according to trading economics, making the ingredients for Kranzakaka much more affordable and available. We can also find sources from the Victorian area in Great Britain around 1885, which testify to traditions of modeling magnificent cakes from raw marzipan and covering them with gold leaf. Kranzakaka is described by Hannah Wisness in her cookbooks from the mid-19th century. In 1884, Hannah Wisness' cookbook called In Textbook in the Different Methods of Housekeeping became the most popular cookbook during this time. Thirteen volumes were published between 1884 to 1921. But there were no cake tins at the time of publishing. Wisness describes how to make and draw the templates to cut them out on paper and how to shape the cakes according to the template. Initially, it was a cake reserved for the elite, gracing the tables of nobility during the grand feasts. However, its popularity grew and soon became a staple at significant events for Norwegians. The Kranzakaka takes the form of a series of concentric rings of cake, layered on top of each other in order to form a steep sloped cone shape, often 18 or more layers stuck together with white icing. Kranzakaka cake rings are made with almonds, sugar, and egg whites. The ideal Kranzakaka is hard to the touch, yet soft and chewy. This confection is served by separating individual rings and breaking them into smaller pieces. In recent years, the Kranzakaka is mass-produced in and sold year-round in the shape of a dessert bar. Mass-produced Kranzakaka is available in stores around Christmas and before New Year's Eve. At its core, the Kranzakaka is a blend of simplicity and artistry. Ingredients are minimal, primarily almonds, sugar, and egg whites. The cake's sweetness is perfectly complemented by the rich, nutty flavor of the almonds. Of course, given the cake's distinctive towering appearance, the challenge lies in its construction. To craft a good Kranzakaka involves carefully following the simplistic but complicated steps. We'll find out how to make the cake after the break. do you like about Christmas? The music, the movies, the traditions, the food, the history, all of the above? Then the Can't Wait for Christmas podcast is for you. Tune in every month to hear a marginally successful stand-up comedian dig into topics like Charlie Brown Christmas, Bing Crosby, Scrooge, A Christmas Carol, Jingle Bells, Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas, The Christmas Truce of World War One, Die Hard, Bethlehem, Gift of the Magi, Haunted Mansion Halloween, Andy Williams, Christmas Lights, Nativity Scenes, Nat King Cole, Before Christmas, Toys R Us, Silent Night, Hell's Grinch, Christmas, Miracle on Main Street, Pearl Christmas, 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 Actually, it's going to take way too long to cover all the stuff we've talked about. Just join us at Can't Wait for Christmas Pod on the 25th of every month for the Can't Wait for Christmas Podcast, where our motto is, keep laughing all the way. It's Christmas! Hello, this is Adam from Merry Britsmas. I am a Christmas fanatic from the UK who thinks that the world needs to know more about the traditions, telly and music that helps make a British Christmas really festive. I look at everything from mince pies, to Boxing Day, to Wham, to Slade, to the Royal Family, to Doctor Who. 
If you want to find out more about a British Christmas, or you are British and want a hit of nostalgia, check me out at Merry Britsmas. And happy blooming Christmas to you and all. And while this cake seems to have very limited ingredients, it can be deceptively hard to make the dough. First, you have to make the dough by processing sliced almonds to form a fine flour. That flour is mixed with a confectioner's sugar, salt, and unbeaten egg whites until it forms a dough similar to a cookie dough. The dough is then chilled overnight to make it easier to handle. That brings us to shaping the dough. Special pans can be purchased to make rings of cake that we stacked and decorated, with the ring forms often gifted among families. If you go online, you can see the, the sets of ring forms. They almost look similar to um, the coil rings of a burner stove. That's the best way I can, compl I can describe it. It's basically five or six pans of these various size donut rings on a sh on a metal pan that you have to shape the dough around and obviously they get smaller as you get closer to the center of the ring and then once you bake each one you have to stack the cake you grease the molds with unsalted butter and roll the dough into thin ropes you fit the dough into the mold join the ends and then you bake the rings are completely cooled in the molds, and then you make a royal icing. Then begin stacking the rings, using a bit of icing to hold them in place. Now, for baking, the rings are baked until they're golden. I know that's a very vague way of describing it, because golden can be various tones to different people. So, is golden a light brown? Is golden a dark brown? You have to experiment. The cake dough is made from ground almonds and powdered sugar and egg whites and flavorings, basically a heartier version of a meringue, and the icing is made from sugar, vinegar, and egg whites. You measure everything by weight, so as ground almonds can be skewed by baker's ratios. When baked, the cake has a crisp outer layer and is soft and chewy on the inside. And if you like the taste of marzipan, then you'll love this. But the marzipan flavor is enhanced with hints of orange and rose water. Now you have to start assembling the cake. You start with the largest ring at the base and the rings are stacked in decreasing size order, held together with icing and creating its signature conical shape. The final touch is often a drizzling of white icing. And for festive occasions, it might be adorned with the Norwegian flag or other decorations such as a small Christmas cracker or ribbons. And of course, for New Year's Eve, as you're stacking the cake rings together, you would actually place a bottle of champagne or sparkling wine inside the rings. So they're completely, the bottle is completely covered by the rings once you're finished making the cake. While it may be simple in its ingredients, it's rather complex in flavor. Almond sugar and egg whites is all it takes to make a Danish kranzakaka. That and a pair of skilled hands. And with only a few ingredients, a kranzakaka tower might seem like a simple concoction. But the devil lies in the details, explains Marianne Stagetorn. She's the owner of the legendary confectionery La Glace in Copenhagen, and throughout the years she has seen her fair share of marzipan misfortunes and faulty towers. With the, with the Kranzakaka Tower, precision really is key. Each marzipan ring must weigh five grams less than the one below. Otherwise, you won't get the right angle on the tower and it'll end up crooked and misshapen. Another very common fail is burning the rings at the base, says Stage Torn, who has been at the helm of La Glace for 33 years. Bite-sized versions of the cake, called Kranzakaka Stenger, 
means English in English wreath cake rods are often prepared for Christmas. The cake is prepared the same way as with the original version, but instead of being formed into rings, they are set into small straight portions between five to eight centimeters or two to three inches long. They are then similarly decorated with white icing, though they may also be dipped in chocolate. And when it's time to serve the traditional kranzakaka, it's not served in a way you may expect. It's customarily dismantled from the bottom. Guests are often invited to pull out a ring, ensuring the cake remains standing for as long as possible, adding an interactive and fun element to the celebration. The Kranzakaka holds a special place in Norwegian traditions. Its presence at celebrations highlights unity, festivity, and a deep appreciation for Norway's cultural heritage. On the occasion of its 100th anniversary in 2006, Co-op set a world record in wreath cake. The world's tallest of its kind was installed in Spikersupa. It's a supermarket in central Oslo on Tuesday the 27th of June. The cake was 13.7 meters high and was made from over 700 kilos of wreath cake dough. Bakers from Fredrikstad set a world record with 300 kilos of almonds and icing sugar. Everyone who wanted had a taste, and by the end of the centenary celebration, the right raised wreath cake had been consumed. Kranzakaka is much more than a confection. It's a symbol of celebration, a bearer of tradition, and a testament to the rich culinary heritage of Denmark and Norway. Whether it's ushering in the new year or commemorating a beautiful wedding, Kranzakaka continues to be a cherished part of Scandinavian festivities. I'm your host, Glenn Warren, and thank you for listening to this serving of Seasons Eatings. Seasons Eatings is available wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Seasons Eatings is also now available on Herd FM. Rather than offer a one-size-fits-most discovery system, Herd FM builds each listener a unique interest profile. The custom curation team works with podcast creators to sort shows into specific categories instead of generalized ones, making it possible to tailor Herd FM to each listener's specific interests. This means the home page of the app is made just for you, and you'll always have a new podcast to discover that's exactly to your taste. The more you listen, the more Herd FM learns what you like creating a personalized experience for every user. Head on over to herd.fm to download to your favorite device. And please, if you can leave a review about the show, we can also spread the Christmas cheer. If you let me know that you've left a review, I'll send you a Seasons Eating sticker as a personal thank you. Also, I would love to hear from you. Send me an email at seasonseatingspodcast at gmail.com to let me know how you like the show, suggestions for future episodes, or just say hi. I know we all get busy, so even sharing the podcast with someone who loves Christmas would be a big help. And if you're feeling a little extra generous this season, you can buy me an eggnog. Head on over to seasonseatingspodcast.com and click on the little cup in the corner. Each small donation helps the daily running of the podcast and is greatly appreciated. Season's Eatings has great items for you or your loved ones for the holiday season, so head on over to seasonseatings.com, click on the merchandise tab to find your next great gift. Thank you for listening, and tune in again for another serving of Season's Eatings. All music for Season's Eatings is used under the Creative Commons license.